in some of the Waikiri Kiri Lagoon dries up. This means it is a temporary lagoon. Because of this, we could only research the lagoon in June. Here we are at Waikiri Kiri Lagoon, Okara. Working on their research projects are CTS Intermediate Department students. As you can see, many tests have been done. Let's see how they work. Over here, we have some scientists in the making. So, what are you, are you testing for? Um, we're testing to of the pH levels in the water. And how do you know the test results are good or bad? Um, seeing how dark it is on the strip. We are testing to see how much oxygen is in the water at the lagoon. The fish can live in the lagoon water because it is 7.1 metres. I mean, that's how much oxygen there is. 7.1 milligrams per litre is the same level that we got in the nearby stream. If the levels were 2 milligrams per litre, most fish would not survive. Animals that we found in the stream included enangas, bullies, freshwater crayfish and shrimp. Hello, my name is Keegan. We are at Waikiri Kitty Lagoon and we're here to talk about <coughs> frogs. Is it important to protect the Australian bell frogs and where it lives in New Zealand? I think it's important that we protect all of the um, natural habitats of our small creatures. Do you realise the importance of the Australian bell frog in New Zealand? I, I guess that frogs are an indicator of how healthy an environment is, so that if, we, if our frogs are disappearing, then we have to ask what we're doing to the environment they live in. Hello, I'm Ashlyn. Behind me, Josh is um, fishing for frogs and tadpoles in the water with a net. Josh, have you found anything in the water? Not yet, but I'm looking through these plants in the ground to find if there's any bugs or anything. Cool. We are using the box to identify bugs that we are trying to find in this lagoon. One of them I've just found is this bug here, which there, it's just called the diving beetle. It's just gone into the corner over here. Um, here we have Liam testing the water, the measure of the water, of the water temperature. It's 7.1 degrees and it's very cold. We searched for frogs in April, May and June, and we had no luck at finding any. We know there are frogs because we heard them calling in October, November and December. We still don't know where the frogs go in the colder months. Hi, my name is Conlon Spence and we're here at Waikiri Lagoon. I'm going to interview Jamie and ask him some questions about fish. Do you like fishing? Yes. Do you live on a farm? Yes. Have you thought about protection of wetlands in regards to native fish? No. Do you know any ways to protect fish in wetlands? No. Well, you could fence to keep livestock out, um, or plant to stop erosion or chemicals such as fertilizers out. Why do you think wetlands are so important to fishing? Um, to keep native fish alive. And because they breed and nest in wetlands, and some live in them. Hi Morgan, why are you using the GPS today? To identify specific points of the wetland. Cool, and why are you doing that? To make a detailed map. Cool. Hi, I'm Ella. And I'm Sharon. And we're here from Coastal Taranaki School in the Land Animals Group. What we're doing today is showing you how we track land animals. This is Holly and she's showing you the tracking tunnels and how we track and see the insect prints. And this is what the cars look like before the animals walk through it and the ink is waterproof so if it rains on it it won't go away or smudge or, smudge or something. As you can see there's a lot of prints from mice, insects, rats and in the white spot in the ink was smooth peanut butter to be precise and put their feet on the ink and then walked out the other side. This book here is just a like it shows tricks and stuff of like if we've got any of them and stuff in the tunnels and stuff. And we've found um, these, we've found male hedgehogs and we've found like 
a lot of mice. We are trying to prevent cars and motorbikes from coming in here and polluting the air and killing the land animals. We're trying to stop farmers from bringing their cattle cow. down. Cattle down, that's why there's a new fence up. Hi, I'm Casey reporting about birds. Here we are on this lovely beach looking at beautiful birds. This beach is known for good surf, fishing, white baiting, camping and partying. But as people don't usually realise, this is a home for many different species. This lagoon is protected by the council. This is the bird recording crew, Chase, River and Lewis. Now, what equipment are you using? This is a very special um, piece of equipment. It's, for, uh, it's very directional, it's a sound microphone. Yeah. This is a sound recording MP3 player and it's very good for recording birds. This is a book that we use for identifying the birds and some of the birds that we saw were a uh, seagull and a Canadian goose, a grey duck and many other birds. Paradise ducks, pukikos, hawks and dead birds. There was a dead gannet that was found. It's So as you know, uh, most people don't really know about Waikiki Kid Lagoon and the fences around us are working to keep livestock and motorbikers out. I'm going to ask a local farmer um, about these fences. Um, hi, can I please ask you some questions? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, what do you think the fences around us are for? To keep the livestock out of the environment and to protect the lagoon. Okay. Um, do you th think that the fences are a good idea? I think that they're really important. Um, that because we don't need to have all, all the animals destroying and helping with the erosion. Okay. Um, would you ever consider coming down to the lagoon for anything other than taking coastal schools, coastal students here? Yes, I think it's a lovely area to come and visit and. Um, and it's a good place for families to come and spend some time. Okay. Um, before the lagoon study started, did you know why Kitty Kid Lagoon existed? No, I didn't. Well, when Jamie Dad isn't taking me fishing yet, but with the Sydney Springs project, I am looking for fish at Why Kitty Kid Lagoon. I'm using the fish traps and using the white bait net to catch fish. Oh, oh Michael! And I'm Billy, and we are the Land Animal Squad. Yes, we are indeed. Hi, I'm Kelly and I'm going to ask them two guys a question. Uh, what animals do you think that live around this area? Um, rats, mice, hedgehogs, and some wildcats. You forgot rabbits. Oh, um, here's a trick. We found some mice and maybe some wildcats because there's some scratch marks on it. Yeah, some rabbits. Yeah. We found some uh, mice prints. They're under shadowed areas, do you think that's where they live? Oh, yeah, because it's away from civilization and that, and it's quite and it's, quite. and it's warmer than most places because you get more wind up at it. Yeah. As you can see, there's lots of evidence leading to animals around Waikiki Kitty Yeah, yeah she's, she's right. <laughs> Maybe we have been researching the lagoon at the wrong time. We found very little life in the lagoon. We didn't find any fish, tadpoles, frogs and very few insects. Maybe spring and early summer will be a better time to carry out research. Talking to some more locals may also help us learn about the life and history of Waikirikiri.